Yes. Welcome to Main Street Gamers, video podcast number 10, This Week in Gaming. I'm Chris Ingles. I'm no, uh, I'm no <laughs> one hinders I'm this Taylor week. Davis. <laughs> okay, so one Taylor one. Davis, no one hinders. You guys, okay, that was terrible. <laughs> you guys just failed the introduction. All right, so leading off the news this week, still no Xbox One release date. Is anyone concerned? No. Is a delay on the horizon. There is. There's something I want to say though. I I was at Walmart last night picking up Diablo at like 1 a.m. Whatever, and I seen a uh, like oh, little, little no they, Redbox didn't have it, so I had to go buy it. Oh. At, but Walmart had it. Anyways, there was a sticker on the counter that said something about August 24th for the Xbox One. I didn't really look at it. I don't know what that meant. But well, first of all, August 24th was two, almost a week and a half ago. Yeah, but what was it? Like a, <laughs> so I'm guessing... Is that when the pre-orders became available? Maybe. I don't know, but... I'm guessing that's not when they announced the release date, because we probably would know oh, about it by like, now, 11 days later. I was like, can I buy an Xbox One? Is that what's going on here? Only from Walmart. Because that would be sweet. That was the most... That was the worst anecdote you could have possibly let off the store at this <laughs> podcast with. <laughs> that store brought nothing to the table at all. <laughs> <laughs> like you're like, I thought you were gonna like drop some inside knowledge on me, like, oh, Mike, uh, it said like, hey, November fourteenth or something like well, that. Be like, nope. Come out. It said August twenty fourth, <laughs> a week and a half ago. <laughs> Sweet. When's uh? Should we start the podcast over? No, it's fine. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um. Okay. All right, so I'm kind of worried. I'll admit it. I'm kind of worried. Why would you worry? There's no way. Because they already delayed it in other countries. Yeah, that's so we can get it on time. Maybe. I think this is something to keep an eye on. I'm still holding, uh, holding on to my theory that it'll be announced on Thursday on the before the first NFL game, and it's going to become bundled with Madden and NFL Sunday ticket. But. Dude, they also came out and said that uh, overseas, the only people that are getting FIFA are the ones who get the Xbox Day One edition. That's the only. Yeah. One Which will be kind of weird if I don't know. I'm. I think that means. I think that makes it more less likely that there's a pack-in game in the United States, but we will see. Yeah, probably. All right, the next news story: Xbox One digital downloads will not be available at 12:01 on Tuesdays at launch, but will be added later. Stupid. This is actually really disappointing to me. That was one of the features I was really hoping for, Why is that like not being able to play digital downloads at release. That's so dumb. Uh, at least they're going to add it. They said they'd probably add it in the first 12 hours, which is weird. Right. Which is just annoying, because, like, if the video gets to, like, 5 gigabytes, and they start the, you can start the download at, like, 1, it's going to get down to, like, 3. Well, can we, can't we start playing the game, even though it's downloading? As, don't we have uh, I think you can, but... I don't know what the... I think you have to wait a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you can just do it instantly. Yeah. This price to be, like, 20%, let's say. That was a big. That was a big bummer. We'll have to see if PlayStation supports that at launch. Too. I mean, it's annoying, but it's nice to know that they like are working towards it and that it'll happen eventually. Because that's like, that's like. Well, I mean, that's what I really wanted. The, that's what I really wanted. The digital downloads. Like, I would start downloading all the games. If that was the case. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter that much at launch. We'll have to pick up consoles anyway. And, like, what game that's releasing in the first six months are you excited about that's not available at launch that's not Titanfall? I mean... Nothing. Like, like yeah. the only game that would have been cool with was Titanfall. And plus, I'm going to buy them on a disc right away anyways. Yep, exactly. So, that's coming down the road. We'll be able to look forward to that. More Xbox One news. Xbox One supports eight controllers. What? Holy shit. I don't yeah. even have eight friends. On the same console? <laughs> Eight controllers what can game hook up to the console. Yeah. yeah, here's okay. So here's the thing: which game, or what site sort of game, would you actually need eight controllers for? Diablo Four. <laughs> what if there was an octopus co-op game where t you and two friends could use both your feet and both your hands to play games? <laughs> it was like octopus battle. <laughs> That's the only thing I could think of. The only other thing I was thinking of is like is a party-style like man. trivia game. Or it was like eight. If you had eight friends is playing Monopoly like a trivia game. Players? That's not even eight players, is it? No, it's like five. I don't like even five, know what like. eight. Yeah. That's that's. Well, it's weird. Like, what are you doing with 
A controllers. I mean, it's cool, but it's like, what What do you do? Well, like, who uses more than two? Yeah, maybe ever? there's uh, <laughs> games that are going to be developed out there now. Titanfall, eight player split screen. Oh, yeah, that's the like, next problem, is you got to split it. Every, oh, that would be everyone, everyone gets four inches of the screen. <laughs> like, I have a 40 inch TV, so it's like not a tiny TV, but it would still be awful. Yeah, especially because there's always that black space that they got to add. It'd be like, it'd be like, I think it, I think it'd be best to do four across and then two up and down, but it would still be awful. Yeah. I actually sense. got out like a, like a string and like marked that off on my TV what it would look like. I should have put the picture up. <laughs> um, I will probably later after the show. Um, some Sony news. Sony is working on a PS4 virtual reality headset. What? Yeah, so they're working on their own version of the Oculus Rift. That's cool. For the PS4. It could be announced as early as game uh, as early as PAX games this weekend. So Has virtual reality games I mean, ever gone well? No. Yeah, but the Oculus Rift has like is getting amazing. Like everyone who's tried it says it's amazing. Yeah, but nobody wants I don't want to put a forty pound thing on my face and just de like sit there. It'd be different if it was I like kinda do. Like gamer, where I walk into an yeah, entire room. Yeah, that's the only thing I want for virtual reality. No, I'm all in on this headset. The Oculus Rift looks amazing. I would totally do it. You guys clearly don't feel the same way. You know what games would be the best for? Yeah, it'd be no. cool. If, like like Skyrim Dead Space. Stuff. Dead Space. How scary would Dead Space be? Dead Space is a third person though, so that'd be weird. Have you seen the YouTube video of the kid that wearing the Oculus Rift that's like deathly afraid of roller coasters? <laughs> no. And they made an Oculus Rift thing where he's on a roller coaster and he literally like curls up into the fetal position like screaming yeah, on that's the floor. Awful. <laughs> yeah, but I mean <laughs> like, No, no that's point. not awful. It's just that's uh, cool. Let's watch these kids squirm around and not play any sweet games on it. Well no, here's the thing. <laughs> no, here's the thing though, like the fact that it's that realistic that it scared him that yeah, much, yeah, it's cool. like actually gets me excited about it because like I want to play a game where I feel like like I, I think it'd be really cool for sports games, like looking inside the player's vision, you know? Yeah, we what talk about, like, about fear though. Fear would be I would not play that game because I'd be scared. For <laughs> it'd be scary. We, uh, we talk it'd also about be cool for Call of Duty. VR, yeah, virtual reality games are cool, and like first person yeah. role playing games like Skyrim would be really sweet if it was done well. But I feel like I would... Star Wars Night Till the Public 3. Launching with... I feel Oculus like I would get so minute. far into the game that I would just start swinging around my house and start breaking stuff. You sit in a chair. You don't run around. Uh, I want to be, wanna be sitting in a chair if I own one of those. Uh, another game I would really enjoy that we haven't talked about yet was uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Left 4 Dead. You see me get away from that? That'd be yeah, rude. Dude, that's the best part about this game now. <laughs> Left 4 Dead would be amazing. Taylor, uh, Hinders is not on the podcast studio because he's playing Diablo 3 because he's trying to catch up to where Davis is on the level. 17 levels to catch. Ah. Yeah, also four Davis years. went hard for like the first Dude, eight Davis, hours. Check this out. Level Gosh, 17. I, uh, I found this uh, legendary hammer called Odin's Son hey. on Diablo hey. last night. So badass. And then they also have a, uh, they also have a Breaking Bad, uh, Achievement little uh, Easter egg. Oh, breaking bad what? I'm sorry, I didn't catch There's that. There's just an achievement called not breaking, not so bad. A little reference in there. Oh, and then that's cool. like that weapon I picked up was a Thor reference. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the next piece of news, not not a not a console news, but a handheld news. There's a Pokemon Direct tomorrow. Good. A what? So Nintendo, there's a Nintendo Direct tomorrow about Pokemon. I don't know what that means. It's just like so, a conference they, all, they hold. Yeah, it's like the little little video conferences they have. That should be great. I hope we see a lot of new stuff about Pokemon. We're getting close on that, too. Um, just keep an eye out for that tomorrow. I don't really want to speculate on what they're going to talk about because... I'm going to say they're going to talk about Pokemon. It's worthless. Yeah, well, obviously. But... The game we're all even more excited about, Grand Theft Auto V, new story trailer. What did you guys think? Uh, I didn't really reveal, like, too much. 
but it was cool. Like it nope, me excited. Never watched it. Okay, so it, it it opens. It's just basically like a little teaser for the story. Uh, there's a the one thing that I thought was really interesting was there was a recurring character, another recurring character we hadn't seen yet. That like nerdy guy. Yeah, he's like your. We don't know any information about him, but he looked like he plays a pretty key part of the he's like part of the story. Command center. Your the guy tech that guy. owned like the airplane shop. No, he's like you know, he's just some nerdy. He looks this nerdy guy. Is he? From he looks NRA like. So? No. No, it's no. like a fat dude. It was, it was, it, it, who's the guy in Ocelot in Metal Gear Solid? That's who it reminded me of. That's who I think he's going to be. Yeah. He's going to be like the guy that like does the behind the scenes stuff. Um, another thing that I don't know if you guys have seen yet, actually, it just popped up online in like the last couple hours. Uh, Grand Theft Auto or IGN had a, got to play Grand Theft Auto for like four hours. Did they really? And they posted like a five page story about it online and a, like a 20 minute video of them talking about it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, so if you are interested in all grants, you should go check that out. Everything they said, like, just glowing reviews, like, they said it's amazing. Our first play of GTA Five shows us the next generation starts when Rockstar says so. Uh, <laughs> well, one of the things they talked about is, like, so the guy talked about, like, completing a mission. And, like, he finished the mission as one character, and he was walking away, and he's like, oh, I wonder what Trevor's doing. So he switched over to Trevor. And Trevor was still in the helicopter that he was in in the mission, flying back to his house. Nice. So, like, it's really cool that they were really, really dedicated to making, like, that three-character thing work. I'm so excited for this so, game. So, yep, obviously, it's going to be amazing. What are you doing? I'm very, very excited. And if you have time, you should go check out that IGN thing, because it was really cool. Um, that's all, that's it for all the news this week. Um, I'm just going to launch into our launch game discussion. This week's launch game. So, if you guys are new to the show, every week we pick a launch game, we talk about it. Um, heading towards the eventual launch of the next-gen consoles. This week's launch game, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Is this, I'm actually kind of excited about this game. Is this multi-platform? Is this coming out for Xbox One and PS4? Or is that a... Xbox One, PS4. Okay. I actually kind of like these Lego games. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, I played Lego Star Wars. Well, all of them, except the newest one, I think. I think there's like a third one that I didn't play. And I played Lego Batman and Lego DC Superhero 1. I think so. I know I'm excited I for Lego... Lego Marvel, I think, I mean, obviously they're not going to reinvent the wheel as far as, like, the gameplay, but I'm really excited to, like, use those Marvel characters, and I'm really excited to see, like, how deep they get, like, they've already announced that they're including, like, a lot of different Marvel characters, and I'm a huge Marvel fanboy, like, I love the comic books and the movies and the games and stuff, so, I'm really excited, the Lego character I'm most excited to play with is Thor, yeah, it's something a little different, too, Yeah, you very good point. Davis, what Marvel superhero are you most excited to play for in Lego form? Iron Man. Yeah, that'll be the that'll be like the premiere one, I think. The jetpack and stuff. Yeah, I want to play as Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. Lego. I'm sure you'll Tony be able Stark. to. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna. It'd be do cool. That. <laughs> you could convert him into Iron Man, like. Is it gonna be an open just, world like, game? added armor? Why don't they should? Um. Be? Like, we don't have that many details about it yet. I'd be really surprised if it was, though. I'm kind of excited for it. Lego Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, there you go. They get those right. Uh, Ooh! If I could just be that's a Lego really... and just roll around and go Super Saiyan Lego, that'd be awesome. Go Super Lego? That'd be yeah. awesome. That's a really good point. Like, what other franchise could, would lend themselves to? I don't know. If they, if they get the rights, they should just make it, because people are going to buy it. Like, you can put Lego on anything, and it's going to sell. So, Tony Stark is a playable character. I just looked it up. Sweet. <laughs> there is an insane amount of playable characters. There's over 50 confirmed playable characters in this game. That's ridiculous. Well, that's how, like, uh, the Lego Star Wars, like, Saga one was. Like, as you unlock characters, you can go back to that fucking bar or whatever it was. Yeah. And just grab yeah. random characters. Cantina. And play through the, dun, 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 play through the game dun, 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 You know total bull crap about that chest you just opened? What? It wasn't there when I was playing. Really? Yeah. Because I was playing with some idiot who didn't know anything about Diablo. 
And I was like, oh, you're going to miss out on a chest. And it was gone. Hmm. Upset. So, some of the characters I'm really excited about playing as, Gambit, is one of my favorite Marvel characters. Don't know who that is. Um, yeah, Iceman, Bobby Drake. Gambit is one of the X-Men. Mm. Uh, uh, one of the big He wasn't in, he, the only movie he was in, the only movie he was in was the first Wolverine origin story. He was Remy LeBeau. He's like a, this guy from New Orleans. Really cool. Um, another guy I'm really excited to play as is Kingpin, who is the villain in Daredevil. That's cool. Um, it should be really cool. I'm really excited for this game. You can also play as Stan Lee. Nah, of course you can. Who is like the, who has all the, the godfather of Marvel. And he can take other superheroes' powers in kind of a cool way. Like so. Something to get excited about. This is one of those games I probably won't pick up at launch, but I definitely, like, in that gaming drought between, like, December and February, can I'll be, one. like, looking to pick up some games. This is one that I'm definitely, like, keeping an eye on. All right, it is time for Name That Character. The two this week are super hard. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know right now. I tried to make them really, really hard. I tried to make them really, really hard. All right, bring it on. Do you want the harder one or the easier one first? Easier. The harder one first? All right. I have appeared in several games. Okay. I am a penguin. You're a penguin? Yeah. Is it Happy Foot? No. It's a movie, Davis. Well, isn't that the kid's name? The movie. My weapon of choice is a large wood mallet. Oh, DK. That was a really good guess. DK? Is it not DK? Yeah. Like Donkey Kong? No, no. he's a Smash Bros. Yeah. Right? yeah! Yeah! Nicely done. Fuck yeah. It's not... It's King DDD. King DDD, that's what I meant. He is close. I was just talking. Um, you knew what I was thinking of. Kirby. Uh, it's unclear whether I'm a hero or villain. I am the Monarch of Dreamland. I am from the Kirby series. You wouldn't want to decide to determine my demeanor. That was such <laughs> a good game. Which game? Kirby's Dreamland. I never played a Kirby game, so... You didn't play Kirby? Kirby was the best. They're a lot of fun, yeah. I watched uh, Kevin Davis. Game Boy Not Color. I don't know what you want to call it. Alright, this might not be as hard as I thought it was. I, thought, I didn't think you guys would get that one. Uh, this one you might get. <laughs> name, name that character. I weigh over 2,000 pounds. Bowser. I appeared in three games, but am only playable in one. I rock a mean triangle. Oh, I often... oh, da, 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 da. is it? Oh, is it? Keep going. You have a guess. Um, Keep going. Maybe. I have a gun capable of shooting pineapples. Donkey Kong. No. Who's the dude that? I'm a Western lowland gorilla. Yeah, it's one of the dudes who shoots. Who shoots pineapples, though? I appeared in Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the big dumb one. What's his name? Yep. You shouldn't call me Chunky. Chunky. Chunky Kong. Chunky Kong. I've, I know. <laughs> I've beaten that game so many times. <laughs> I love that game. That is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, dude. The Kongs in that are awesome. All right. That brings us to the question of the week. Week, 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 week. <laughs> This week's question of the week. Fader. What is the first thing you will do in Grand Theft Auto V? <laughs> oh, gosh. Destroy Davis's jet. I'm going to be completely overwhelmed. <laughs> I imagine I will probably... That's a pretty good answer. I'll either gonna, I'm either going to shoot somebody or steal a car. Like That's basically what's going to happen. Yeah, I think that's my thing. I'm going to find a fast car and just start barreling through the city. <laughs> Because one of the things we did learn in the IGN gameplay thing that was released today was that the whole map is available to you at launch. Is it really? That's awesome. Yep. I, and the only thing that, like, it has, like, a fog of war on it, you know, like... Oh, like they didn't see Andreas? You have to, like, reveal it as you go through, I yeah. Think, oh, I called it! So, uh, yeah, that was actually a good call on your part. I was When I heard that today, I was like, oh, Davis was right. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to get in a car and just start barreling through the city and, like, explore I'm and, to find a plane. like, try and un reveal the whole thing. That's the first yeah, thing eventually, I'm going like, to I'm going to find a plane. Finding a chopper, getting a parachute, like, getting up in the air. It's going to be so hard for me to beat this game. It's really going to be difficult. Yeah, it's going to be really, really difficult. But it's still kind of unsure. Like, it's still unclear how the, 
like sort of online implementation will work, like if you'll be able to do anything online before the October first date, but maybe there'll be maybe I'm sure we'll, we'll find out little, before like, the game launches. A little teaser mode, just like maybe team deathmatch or something. Well, the only real question is like, can you do free mode before that October first date? Yeah. But like we know that you're not gonna be able to do any of the mission stuff or like any of the game types, but if you could even just like get in somebody else's game. We'll see. But we will see. We're getting close. And keeping in sort of uh, line with the GTA theme, this week's favorite, favorite GTA vehicle. Ooh. Did we do this one last week? I don't think so. I don't think so. Appreciate Can it. anyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> no, I can't hear you. Um, my favorite GTA vehicle is the Coquette. Really? You don't? Because I really like the I really like the Corvette, and it's modeled after the Corvette. It looks the same, same name, like sort of. My favorite vehicle, or the stunt plane in GTA San Andreas, because that was really fun. I'm a I'm a big fan of the Clover in San Andreas. That's Go a good one. Clover, your uh, generic muscle car. I do uh, I do appreciate the feel of a Virgo in GTA 4. <laughs> I also like the Dukes. The Dukes. <laughs> the Dukes makes me. There's so many cars in San Andreas though. Like you can get like the monster truck and stuff, and like the four wheeler. I'm glad to see that all yeah. coming back in GTA 5. I'm gonna put you on the spot right here, Davis. They would. Before, uh, like two weeks ago, when we were talking, you said you could name all the vehicles from GTA 4. GTA 4, let's do it. I have the list. I have the list included in you the show notes. The entire so. list of vehicles. Yep. Yep. I don't even know where to start. To make it easier for you, I'm gonna read them by category. Okay. Sports cars and supercars. All right. Coquette. Super GT, Infernus, Comet. Does the Sultan RS count as a sports car? Uh, you, okay, so you're missing a couple. Let me let me let me figure out how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine. nine. You got Comet, Coquette, Infernus, Super GT. Is the Sultan RS one? Yep, four left. Does a Sultan count? Sultan? No. Um. Oh, what else is a super? See, this is impossible. I don't There's know no what one. Super cars it... there are. You missed Banshee. Oh, duh. Felter. Oh yeah, piece of crap. Turismo. Turismo. <laughs> That's but that's just easy. to show, it goes to show you how difficult that would be. Yeah, there's like a there's billion cars in that game. There's ten categories. I got the vans. Pony, oh. burrito, speedo. Uh, that's about all I got. Rebla. That's not a van. That's, that's a what you sports. That's like a mid-size oh. family car. M- Moonbeam. Moonbeam. All right. This is Ben. <laughs> Nature Gamers This Week in Gaming Episode 10 Diablo Yes sir Rayman